Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. You're joining me in my temporary accommodation. This is the, the space that I've rented for a little while to help me with the house move. So it's just basically like a studio flat that I've got. A, got through a friend of a friend whose friend knows someone who walks someone's dog who's someone's uncle had that spare room. So we've got this place, it's above a business. Um, it's previously someone's living accommodation but it's getting renovated but isn't being used for a couple of months while it's getting done up so I've got this and this is it so the plan is this is the first day getting in here some racking is going to be set up down there so we've got a space for that move some tacks over but first job is get the racking in and get it built so let's go on with that <laughs> Oh, so that's the first bit done. As I mentioned, it was up a flight of stairs. And it's a million degrees in here. So, quite steep stairs. Um, they are heavier than they look. They are heavier than they look. They're alright, and they're alright. But my god, that's taking me out. Of, that's taking it out of me already. So this stuff is Big Doug Racking, you've heard me talk about that many times before on the channel. Um, I've gone for new racking, this is 6 feet by 2 feet. So these are 6 by 2 boards. And it comes up yay high as well. Um, rated for, I want to say it's either 800 kilos or 610 kilos, I've got two different types. I can't remember which one this is, but either will be overkill for what we're trying to do here. But we just need to get them set up. I spotted a little, not problem, maybe challenge in the bathroom where I'm going to get my water from. Um, but let's crack on and get these built, shall we? Time lapse! So I'm remembering my experience from the last time trying to build these big dug racking units. They're great, once they're up it's kind of fit and forget, don't really need any maintenance or anything like that, but there's a note on the package which says easy slot together construction and hopefully you can see the sweat on my brow. I would challenge that. <laughs> uh, it's taken me ages just to get these ones up because every time you bash in one corner another corner pops out. So maybe a two person job in hindsight, but you know, I've got this far, I've got the main frame done. I'm just trying to fit these center supports now, these braces. And they just won't go in for love, no money. And it's quite noisy, because every time I whack something, it makes a big resonating whack. And there's houses and stuff around here and it's getting on a bit, so I don't really want to be pissing people off. So I think I'm gonna get as many of these in as I can and maybe come back another day when it's a bit uh, earlier in the day and I can make a bit more noise and hopefully not piss off as many people but we're getting there <sighs> right I think I'm going to call it a day with this my persuader isn't persuading as much as I'd like it to do these things here if you can see um, the cross supports cross beams whatever you call them I've managed to get three in well I managed to get two and a half in because this one's not going in for love nor money and uh, just isn't being persuaded um, Plus, I've only got four of these, so I've either lost some because there are there are holes for three on each layer of shelves, and there's four shelves. So I've either lost some, or some haven't been delivered, or you're not, not meant to use three on each one maybe, maybe you're just meant to use two. And then if there was four here, yeah that would make sense if I've left, I've searched in the car, but maybe I've just left it in the garage at home. Maybe you're just meant to have two on each shelf. So, more research needed, but like I say, it's getting a bit late now for smashing and banging. It's really noisy. Um, but we're getting there, so we've got that much done. Um, like I say, that'll do for the tanks that I'm hoping to protect. 
Um, so I'll get two sh two usable shelves, three usable shelves as I need them, but I think I can get away with two. Get all the, the fish that I'm worried about stored here. Get the air pump set up. Um, so I'll come back another day, finish this off, bring some tanks with me, start filling up tanks. And then the next visit after that, I'll start bringing fish. Um, so I'll show you the challenge that I was mentioning earlier. Um, if you come with me, so the water source, which I did check, so I don't know why I didn't notice this the last time, is in here. So the options that I've got, let me just turn you around. The water source is here. So it's one of these fancy taps. I'm not sure if that comes off. There is like a spanner fitting. So that might need some attention to be able to hook up some kind of hose to it. Um, so I'll need to bring a spanner to see if I can get that off or get some kind of hose attachment to it. And failing that, there's a shower. So I'm pretty sure I can unhook that shower head and use that as a hose attachment to get my water from. And I have another gadget, which I was hoping to use to fill the water. So I've got a bit of a, a mini unboxing for you. This is a thing that I had bought when I was considering moving all the fish on the day and I wanted to be able to fill up tanks quickly with hot water. So we've got some thread tape, but it's basically, can I get this out with one hand? Maybe with the spanner, you'll be able to tell what it is. It's like a high volume carbon filter, so it's like a HMA filter on steroids. It's for ponds, really. Um, what else have we got in here? Got various fitments as well. So, as you can see, I need some kind of hose hookup to get through this. various other fittings but basically it's just a big supercharged HMA filter which takes all the chlorine and chloramines out of the water and um, it's packed with carbon granules carbon floss all that kind of stuff so you attach your water supply one end and then out comes water at a high rate I can't quite remember the, the quoted volume so it's called a jumbo big blue filter um, 10 inch pond dechlorinator, a big blue carbon block water filter with ports, PTFE tape and big blue wrench. Looks white to me, but you know. So I'll, I can still use this and the idea was that I could run hot water through that so I didn't need to wait to heat tanks, but I don't need to do that now that I've got a lot more time. I thought that was an interesting thing. So let's help open it up and you can have a look. So, just a big version of what I've got in my fish room. Don't need the wrench to open it quite this time. There you go, just a big version of the ones that I use at home. Nothing more complicated than that. It's just a carbon block filter, a bigger one that allows you to put more flow through. So, it'll come in handy no matter what I use it for, no doubt. So I think that's about as far as I can get today. Um, underachieved somewhat. I hope to get the rack at least built fully, but it's just too noisy and I don't want to piss everyone off on my first day here. So we'll come back a bit earlier and finish those things off. I'll figure out what I need to do with the brackets. I'll figure out what I can do with the hose and the hose fittings to get water into the tanks. But make sure you click that button so you can follow along with the journey of the man who's moving a fish room and building a fish room that doesn't know anything about building or DIY. Well, not nothing, but just very little. But I'm getting there. Hopefully you can come along with me in the journey. Kick that, kick that subscribe button. Click that subscribe button. Sorry, hot sweaty mess. And we'll see how we go on. And remember, join us on Friday nights at 9pm for the live streams. So you can ask me any questions or tell me how much I'm doing it wrong or point out all my obvious mistakes. Yeah, but for now, go back and get a shower.